You won't regret it. The Dragon's always been a favorite stop along the road between Whalen and Kettle Run. You'll do well with it. I hope so. I, I've heard good things. The staff have all agreed to stay on, and the larder is stocked with food, so you can open up right away if you like to. Meldrew, the cook, he was my right hand. He should be able to offer advice if anything comes up. All right then. Um... Thank you. Well, good luck to you. I've got a long journey ahead and I should get started. Journey well. Oh, I nearly forgot. Get Meldrew to tell you about the three ghosts. Three ghosts? Meldrew! Are you here? I need to speak with you. Coming, sir. What? What is it? You nearly sat in the dragon's chair, sir. The... the dragon's chair? Uh, yes, yes. This chair, right here. Uh, that's right. Not a very large dragon, then, is it? Oh, I couldn't say so, sir. I never met the man. The man? Uh, the dragon's a man? But not anymore, I suppose. Not anymore, so... What, you're telling me he's a shapeshifter? Oh. <laughs> be ridiculous, sir. Shapeshifters aren't real. They were werewolves, of course. Uh, no, he, he's a man, sir. Or he was. Oh, Meldrew. Uh, he's a ghost now, sir. A ghost? Oh, right. The three ghosts. Uh, yes. They've been haunting this place for years. <laughs> They're almost like family. <laughs> Except for the dragon, mind you. And why? My dear Meldrew, does a ghost own a chair in my tavern? Bit of a long story, sir. Better get started then. Well, it began about 50 years ago. So I'm told, the dragon was a bandit along this stretch of road. And he would come here to drink and to hear news about caravans and merchants traveling along the road. He always sat in the same chair and insisted that it stay in the same place. If he came into the tavern and found anyone sitting in his chair, he killed them on the spot. Seems a bit extreme, don't you think? Indeed, sir. But not many died that way once word got around. Until one day, a merchant entered the tavern. He'd just been robbed on the road, you see, and he recognized the dragon as the man who'd robbed him. And before the dragon noticed him, the merchant stabbed him in the heart with his cheese knife. What? A cheese knife? And he died right in that chair. A gruesome tale, Meldrew, but the man's been dead for 50 years for St. Cuthbert's sake. I think it's safe to reclaim the chair by now. Ever since that night, sir, every man, woman, or child that has laid two cheeks to rest in that chair has died within the hour. Oh, nonsense. Indeed, sir, it's true. I've seen it myself. It's how I became the cook. The old cook didn't believe in it, you see. And he sat down in it for a short spell after we closed. And then he tripped and fell in the kitchen straight afterwards. <laughs> he tripped? It's a hardly cause for alarm, is it? Well, he tripped and fell on his own cheese knife. Well, again? <sighs> well, still, uh, likely coincidence. Well, I'd have thought so too, sir. But. Every man who comes in here has a story or two about someone who's tried their luck and paid the price. Well, perhaps we should start by getting rid of all the cheese knives, and then maybe the chair, just to be safe. Oh, well, I, I, I wouldn't move the chair, sir. And why not? Oh, well, uh, the dragon doesn't really like for his chair to be moved. Uh, of course he doesn't. Um, 
Every time the chair has been moved, there's been a fire in the tavern. There's been two already, sir. <sighs> All right, All right, I've heard enough. Meldrew, whatever tales you want to tell to entertain people is your business. But this tavern is my business, right. and I'll have no more talk of these uh, ghosts. Uh, Do you understand? But you... Yes, sir. Not all Meldrew screwing away that nonsense, scaring away our customers. But who is? Uh, but Cecilia, you know they're real. It doesn't matter what I know if people don't come here because they're afraid to sit in the wrong chair. He's got no business sense, that one. Not the sort you'd want to make your partner. Oh, partner? What, who? Who are you? Uh, uh, this is Celia, our head wench. Give you a head, wench! Oh! You hairy slug! I'm the headmistress of the house, sir. I'm the most valued and important person working here. Besides you, of course. I see. Uh, do you believe in these ghosts as well? I believe that what matters most isn't who's haunting the chairs, it's who's sitting in them and paying us coin. The regulars know the legend and keep newcomers from sitting there. But we don't need to encourage the tales. And plus, the other two are just minor annoyance. The other two? Mm-hmm. And I suppose these other two ghosts say uh, haunt the kitchen and uh, keep people from doing the dishes. <laughs> no, sir, nothing like that. They're fairly harmless. Um, Sir Heinrich is a little bit messy, but... Well, Sally's downright useful. Useful? She scare away the riffraff, does she? Oh, no, no. She, um, sweeps the floors. She sweeps the floors? Mind you, she does it when she feels like it, and whether it needs it or not. <laughs> and, uh, not to mention that sometimes it's a bit unsettling to see the room just kind of floating around there. All right, I've heard enough. But I didn't even tell you about Sir Heinrich, sir. I told you I don't want to they hear about... They say he buried a treasure nearby. And he uh, buried it so he would avoid being robbed. But he died before he could reclaim it. And now he lingers here hoping to find it. So, uh, what else do we need to do before we open? Uh, well, I was just about to start the well, morning. Well, Meldrew has started the stew and uh, the common room is ready. It doesn't get busy until mid-afternoon. I can see two things till then, if you'd like to go have a rest. Okay. Partner? Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's do that. Um, and no telling ghost stories to the customers, please. I, and, um, we're not partners. Oh, oh, of course not. mind, my love? Sure. Oh, uh, that's Sally, sir. She's um, starting a bit early tonight, but like I said, <laughs> she does it when she feels like it. That's a ghost. Uh, yes, that's Sally, sir. Are you doing that? It's not me, sir. It's Sally. Oh, um, wouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't believe you, Meldrew. Quite all right, sir. <laughs> In all the excitement, I'd nearly forgotten to get you to sign this, sir. What's this? Oh, it's the contract between you and the employees, sir. Just standard stuff, really. How about you come and have a seat over here and, um, 
while you have a look at it. The line you need to sign is right down here. In the event of my death, whether by natural causes, sorcery, foul play, or, or troll attack, the tavern, the dragon's rest, I bequeath to Celia Bellywood. Celia, what the blazes is this? Well, it's just in case, isn't it? We wouldn't want just anyone to take over the tavern, um, would we? Sir, you were trying um, to trick me into signing this sir. and to sit in that cursed chair to do um, it. Those are just silly ghost stories. You, you said so yourself. Um, I've only just met you, and already you're trying to fleece me out of this tavern and risk my life to do it. Forget ghosts. It's knowing that there are people like you in the world. That's what's really it's scary. Ah! Oh no, dragon! No, 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 no! Wait, it was an accident. He pushed me. Wait, wait! Isn't there something we can feel? Celia, listen to me very carefully. Did both of your cheeks touch the chair? What are you talking about? The chair's in pieces. Did it, both of your cheeks touch the chair? It mostly touched my back. It might have brushed my left cheek a bit, but no, I don't think so. Oh, that's very good. Oh. Oh. Right then. Oh. So, is there anything that you'd like us to help you save from the fire? Um. Oh, yeah. oh. You all right, sir? No, not really. How am I supposed to explain all this? If someone asks me, what happened to the tavern you bought? I mean, what am I supposed to say? Well, well, I certainly can't say that while my head wench was trying to trick me into signing the bar over to her, the, the ghost of a knight spilled beer on the bar, which, which caused me to knock my head wench into the favorite chair of a murderous bandit, who's been dead for 50 years, whose ghost then took revenge by setting fire to my tavern. You know, when you say it, it does sound a bit far-fetched. Well, sir, I guess my services will no longer be needed. Yes, there won't be much of a crowd tonight, so that might be best. There are other taverns more appreciative of my talent. If you don't have any luck, try the Assassin's Guild. <coughs> <coughs> oh. <laughs> I should have known that damn broom would survive the fire. Oh, Sally, I think the place is a bit far gone for sweeping to do any good. I don't know what Sally's gonna do without the dragon's rest. She's been working here in life and in death. And Sir Heinrich won't find much ale to steal in the woods. Sweetie. Of course I won't miss the dragon, of course. What is it, sir? It's a lot of coin. It's Sir Heinrich's treasure. <laughs> the story was true. Oh, it must have been buried here the whole time. Oh, oh Sally, if you weren't a ghost, I could kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Sally. I'm sensing Sally might be married. <laughs> in life and in death. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <gasps> So you'll rebuild the tavern then? Yeah, yes, Meldrew, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Except for a certain chair.